Now the next rig I'm going to show you is very very similar to the Nautilus Knot rig but I'm using a little bit of shrink tube and so I use a slightly different pattern of hook. What I use for this one is the uh, wide gape hooks. Um, it's, it's my preferred pattern, it's got a slight intern point and they tend to be very very sharp and have a slightly wider gape than, than uh, the normal hooks. Fantastic uh, hook and this is the difference, a little bit of shrink tubing. Now this is the rig I use for a lot of my bottom bait fishing uh, and snowman tie fishing and it, it really is fantastic. So it's, it's just a simple case of take a bit of end trap, uh, again about a foot 14 inches should make a, a 7 or 8 inch rig. Strip the end bit off and you're ready to go. Right now here are the components for the rig. Again it's end trap again which I've cut off about I don't know, uh, 14 inches and, and stripped the end of it back. Um, wide gape hook or you can use the captor hooks. I, I prefer the the wide gape style rather than the curved shank because it, it suits the shrink tubing rig a lot better and this is one of my favourite rigs And but this time we just have a, bit, a little bit of shrink tubing so everything's pretty much the same as before thread this on in the same way if it'll go leave a bit more hair this time because we're going to try and tie a salmon so just a little bit longer and again, whip it around six to eight times. I'm going to have to guess because I can't count what I'm talking. And then thread it through. And it never goes through smoothly when you want it to. <laughs> so there's a knotless knot effect. Just going to pull that back slide to give it a bit more flexibility. And I tie my little overhand knot again. So I pretty much use that for a lot of my rigs these days, like so. And then it's uh, just a case of measure up for this. So that looks about right. I've probably left myself not much material to play with here, unfortunately. But, um, I'm sure I'll manage it. Normally, what you can do is if you're struggling, just get a boiling needle and poke that through and pick that up and then it just pulls through. Wet it. Always wet every knot before we pull it down, it just beds in better. I usually use my teeth as well for three way pull just to make sure the knot's extra tight. Snip the tag end off. I think my scissors are a little bit blunt here, I could do with a new pair. That'll do. And now what I want is the difference a bit of shrink tubing. So just cut it down to the desired amount, which is probably about that much. Thread it on. Always moisten the eye of the hook a little bit because it just helps slide over. And then it'll just slide over. I'll show you, and then we just steam that down later, put the bait on and we're ready to go. Right now here's the finished rig. I've just put a couple of baits on to make it into a snowman presentation. There's a bottom bait there and a pop-up and that will sink very very slowly under the weight of the hook. Uh, it's, it's a cracking little rig that. I've connected it to a uh, inline lead uh, with a, uh, a quarter leader on. Now that's, that's a fantastic way of fishing as well because you get the you know the direct weight from the lead. It's, it's really good for fishing it on gravel, uh, those sorts of leads. Uh, but the rig itself can fish in uh, gravel, silt, and also very light weed because it sinks very, very slowly, so it will sit on top of uh, weed that's probably about an inch or so high. Um, cracking rig, that one. I took a, a very big fish on it a couple of years back uh, called Bite Mark, and um, on a very, very similar rig to that, so it, it, it is very effective and it's, it's a rig I use on a regular basis. So give that one a go and see how you fare.